Before we begin, just a few points on the back of your bulletins, just to point out. Middle and high school youth group resume tonight from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Supplies for newborns. The Asbury United Methodist Church is holding a drive for newborns. <coughs> Excuse me. And baby supplies are needed. Uh, things like diapers, wipes, clothing, blankets, and et cetera. If you would like to help our sister church with this endeavor, please bring your donations to the collection center located between the memorial room and the great hall. If you have any questions, ask Dave Wade. If you wake up and the snow is covering, if the snow was covering the ground on the morning, just call the church office and they will be able to let you know by a phone message whether or not there is going to be service or whether it's going to be done via Zoom. Our church office will be closed tomorrow because of an in observance of Martin Luther King's Day. The hours are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Reverend Dave is always happy to meet with you. Uh, and then our study schedule, women's on Monday night at 7 p.m. meeting will be via Zoom for the next few weeks. And Wednesday morning study will still be in room U303 at 10 a.m. and Wednesday night study at 7 p.m. in the memorial room. Please stand and join me to the call to worship. Come, whoever you are, wherever you are, come. Now is the time to worship. What time is it? You may be seated.
please join me for the opening prayer printed in your orders of worship. Almighty God, during this time of prayer, we thank you for all that you have given us. You have declared so often that it was time to bless us. 2,000 years ago, you declared it was time to save us. You make all things beautiful in your time. You know the plans you have for us and when it is time for us to experience them. You know what time it is right now. Help us to be patient when necessary and active when the time is right. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Make yourselves comfortable here in the house of God. It's good to see you as we continue to journey through the season after Epiphany together. Um, just a time to pray with and for each other, to lift up our joys and our sorrows, the things that are on our minds and in our hearts today. Uh, if you're worshiping with us virtually, you can submit your prayer concerns and joys into the comments section on Facebook and YouTube. And all of us here in person have the opportunity to lift up those things in, uh, with our voices. So uh, just a couple of things I want to begin with. Um, yeah, we're talking about uh, time today. And uh, so you may be wondering, isn't it time that this stuff comes down? Uh, yes, but uh, we have a wedding on Saturday, and they asked if we could keep the Christmas stuff up for a couple weeks for their wedding pictures. So, so that's why they're still up. Um, so uh, also, if you know her, uh, just a joy to share with all of you today that Stacy was at the 9 o'clock service in person today. So wow. that is really good news for all of you who know her. Uh, she's been uh, battling cancer since I think before I got here, or maybe right after. So uh, she's finally well enough to, to be back in person again today, which is great news for us and especially for her. Uh, and also, um, I have a joy to share with you about the statistical report. Who has ever said that before? Right. Um, the statistical reports are due this time every year to the conference, and they, they tell the conference about, you know, finance stuff, but also, you know, all the, all the stuff, <clears throat> attendance and missions and stuff like that, giving to uh, missions and things like that. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a praise for us this year because uh, I can share with you, uh, and I'll direct your attention to uh, Linda, what she has written up for the uh, friendly visitor. Uh, so you can see exact amounts that we have given to things like UMCOR and uh, Christian education funds and missions and ministries and feeding the homeless and, and clothing those who are cold in the wintertime and all those things, the great things that you've been doing. Uh, so that's, that's part of her report that's in there and you can, I think you can see that now. Um, but what wasn't in there, which is my responsibility that comes to my desk, is uh, attendance and participation. And so I can share with you that in 2022, when we combine in-person with virtual attendance, our total attendance grew in 2022 by 16%, which is amazing. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, amen. And especially as we come upon, probably in the next few weeks, we'll be having our first vacation Bible school meeting. I've got everything on a spreadsheet attendance at each service and virtually in all the different ways, all laid out every single week. And I can tell you there was a significant bump in everything after VBS. Sunday school almost doubled and in-person attendance grew by over 10 people on average per week. We had entire families coming to the church, added to our Sunday school. The 9 a.m. service has increased by almost double. Uh, this time last year, they were worshiping an average of 35 to 40. Today, we had 65 uh, in the middle of January. So, amen. And, uh, you know, in this service, we've got the Newhall family up there working our live stream. We've got all kinds of uh, things going on and good worship going on. We've got our young disciples here every week. I think all the time about my first few months here. And uh, it was a rare occasion if, uh, if we had a young disciple for me to talk to when I first started here. And now I can't even tell you the last time we didn't have one. 
And so uh, we're really seeing in every single service, in every single mission, in every single small group, we're seeing growth in the church. And that is something to praise God for today. Amen. And so now it's your turn. Is there uh, good or bad, the weeping and rejoicing? What's going on in your life? If you'd like to share something with us, let your church family know about it. You can raise your hand and uh, you at home can send it into the comment section. Is there anything you wish to share with your church family this morning? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Prayers for Carl's family. Uh, unexpected passing. His uh, service is coming up, so we pray for his family and friends as they grieve his uh, significant loss. Lord, hear our prayers. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. Two praises. First of all, the trustees have uh, contracted with a snow and ice removal uh, person, and the good news is we're in control, meaning if it's going to change to rain, he doesn't arrive. He does not arrive, and he only does the area that we say he's going to do, so we're only going to pay him for what he's going to do, which is a real fiscal bonus for all of us. Secondly, many of you had said, Lynn, did you look at the ceiling? We did. Yeah, I looked. <laughs> um, Dave Vedra went up in the attic, which now has a catwalk, uh, thanks to Dave, and emptied a tarp filled with water. That was from the rain through the roof. A few days later, Dave Wade went up with our roof repairer. We now have the leak in the roof fully prepared. The tarp is still there, and I hear there's rain coming this afternoon, or later in the week, I guess. We'll find out then how the roof did. But yeah, we know, but we're not going to fix that until we know the roof is fixed. So yes, I see it. <laughs> you have a great view of it. <laughs> Yes, our snow removal guy, great, great guy, too, on top of it all. He's a great guy, does a great job, very thorough, and sometimes he brings his son. So uh, we're happy that uh, we're in a really good situation there with snow removal. And uh, again, trustees, always active, always doing things. It's, uh, she's a, a beautiful but aging church building, and it's a lot of upkeep, and our trustees are always doing something behind the scenes. And we're so thankful for all of our trustees doing all the work that they do. Okay. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. So much. Thank you. Yes. Amen. And for all those who are out in the cold. Prayers, prayers for vi victims of natural disasters and, and human disasters, humans hurting other people, which happens way too much. And so we pray for all those communities. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much for taking leadership in that uh, ministry. 
Uh, Melissa has uh, been teaching the, the adult Sunday school class and doing a great job. And um, she uh, and her family are, are in contact with a new rabbi who has uh, agreed to come and uh, lead us in a Seder dinner on March 12th at dinner time. So uh, more information will be coming out in the bulletin and uh, all, the, all the things we release in the future. But just so you know, that's coming up. Uh, an actual, authentic Jewish rabbi leading us in a Seder. It's going to be really cool. Right in the middle of Lent, it's going to be a great experience so that we can really put ourselves at the table with Jesus and what that would have looked like and uh, really understanding the, uh, the Jewish theology behind the communion table that we come to. Amen. Thank you so much for leading that. Yes. Oh, in the hospital? Okay. Yeah, we pray for her. Who is it again? Anna. Okay. We pray for Anna, who's in the hospital. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray that she gets better real quick and she can feel your presence calming her and giving her hope as she lays in that hospital bed. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Pray for Bob's uh, brother who passed away and the family that is uh, grieving his loss, Stan. We pray for Stan's family and friends. And Lord, the church is here and ready to love his family, and minister to them, and sit with them and talk with them. Send us, Lord, to bring peace and healing into their lives. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, I mentioned that Stacy was back at the 9 o'clock service. We have somebody back at our service. Jim is back after his knee replacement surgery. So it's good to see you. Amen. That's a praise. Yes. Lisa is preparing to go off and do her missionary work again and teach new disciples how to be disciples. And uh, that's important work, good and important work, and we're so happy that, uh, that we can pray with you as you go. And Lord, hear our prayers and bless our sister Lisa. Amen. Any other joys or concerns? Friends, let's pray. Almighty God, you have heard the prayers of your people, the good and the bad, some weeping and some rejoicing, some good news and some bad news. You've heard that our hearts are hurting for the loss of loved ones, dear, dear and close friends and siblings. So God, we pray that you be with all of us, all of us who are grieving. Show us once again the hope that is in eternal life. Remind us of all the things that your son Jesus Christ did for us. And as we sit here every week and stare at this cross, 
Remind us of your good news, the best news that the world has ever heard. And although there is hope and good news, even in death, it still hurts. So we pray, Lord, that you bless and comfort all those hurting hearts today. We also pray for those who are suffering in any ways that human beings can suffer, whether that be physically or emotionally or financially or socially or even spiritually. Lord, we pray that all those who need you will know that you are there, that they will turn to you and not away from you in their struggles, that they will open up your holy word and find peace and comfort in it, that they will reach out to their church for fellowship, for support, for prayers, for compassion and love. And Lord, we thank you for all the good things that we have mentioned during this prayer time. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us, all the good things going on in our lives. We thank you for this body of Christ that we call the United Methodist Church at Epsecon. It is a diverse, dedicated, and faithful body. And we give you thanks that it is, in the last year, a growing body. Growing not just in size and number, but also in faithfulness and in stewardship. Growing in small groups, growing in Christian education, growing in love. God, we thank you for this day, for this is a day we've never seen before and one that we'll never see again. So help us to make the most of it. Help us to live this day like it matters. We pray for our servicemen and women all over the world who are fighting to defend our freedom. And we pray for our veterans who are back home, but suffering from all the things they saw and heard. We pray for our first responders, for police and fire and EMT workers, for doctors and nurses and chaplains, for all those who go into dangerous and unfortunate situations. And they bring healing and peace and love. And Lord, we pray for your church. Here in Absecon and all over the world, we pray that your church will be what you created it to be. A source of good news. A source of hope. A source of healing. A source of light. Shining even in the darkest of moments. We pray for all these things and all these people. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray in this way, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, in your bulletin, on the bottom of the first page, you'll see that the chorus for today is Bind Us Together. I invite you, if you're able, to stand with me as we sing that together.
Please be seated. Thank you all so much. God has given you such great talents and gifts and graces. And we're so thankful that you've decided to use them to help us worship God every week. Amen. We're so thankful for you. Now our young disciples are invited up here with me for a moment as we talk about what God is teaching us today. As they come up, I have a question for everybody else. How do you build a church in the wintertime? Yeah. With snow, snow bricks, you igloo it together. Yeah. Yeah, so they've heard this already because uh, I, I go down into the Sunday school and tell them. All right. Well, today I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you today how to find something in the Bible. Okay. So uh, today's scripture comes from the book of Psalms. The good thing about the Psalms is that they are the easiest to find in the whole Bible. Do you know why? See, all you have to do is find the middle of the Bible and put your finger in there, and you open it up, and there you are. You're at the Psalms. So today's scripture, see, Psalm. Oh, boy, look at this. So today, we're talking about Psalm 40. Right now, I'm at Psalm 122, so I'm kind of a little far away, right? So that means I got to go back a little bit and find Psalm 40. Now I'm at 78, we're almost there. Oh, at 35, I went too far, right? Oh, thank you so much. <coughs> I'll put that right there for now. Okay, now okay, I think on the next page we're gonna be at Psalm 40. There we go, 39 and 40. Okay, now, see under every new Psalm, there's a title, almost like how you title a song Right? Why do you think the Psalms might be titled like a song? Yeah. Um, because it has to be numbers. Right? There's lots of numbers. Yeah. Just like verses in a song. Right? That's because 
the Psalms were songs. And in Jewish synagogues, which is where Jewish people worship, like we worship in churches, they worship in synagogues. In Jewish synagogues, they would actually sing Psalm 40. Don't worry, I am not going to do that. You don't want that to happen. Right. Do you want that? I don't think so. I would have to take the microphone off and everything. So um, this is titled, A Song to the Leader of David. David! Yeah, not me. King David. Right. My name is David. So that's right. 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 It, that's right. It is. Yeah. We've got a few Davids here. Right. So Psalm 40 is talking to us about time. If I asked you what time is it, what, what would you do to give me that answer? Say it's 40, right? You would just pick a number out of the air, right? right? Or you'd go to, go to a watch, right? Or a clock back there. Say that clock back there. Make sure that I don't preach too long. Right. So, um, but when we're asking about God's time, we're not asking about time that, um, that you can get on a watch. But it's about who is deciding what we do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're fixing it. Yeah, we're fixing. It's going to be okay. So when we're talking about God's time, we're talking about when things should happen, right? Now, should things happen when we want them to happen or when God wants them to happen? When God wants them to happen, right? So, like, did you ever want something to happen a little bit faster? Like, maybe you thought, maybe, can it be Christmas again already, right? Or can my birthday get here a little bit a little bit quicker, right? Or maybe, when is the last day of school going to be here already, right? But, the, but David is telling us today that we should be patient and wait for God's time for things to happen. So what do you think it looks like when we're patient? Are we, are we going crazy or are we just kind of sitting here calm? Exactly. We're just calm and we're sitting here and we say, okay, God, whenever you want it to happen, it's fine with me, right? All right. So that can be hard, though, because, like, sometimes we want things to come quicker, right? Uh, well, we're going to pray now so that um, I can take that up to the pulpit and uh, it can be time for the sermon, right? All right. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we know that it's hard sometimes. We want good things in life to happen quicker than they are. But, God, we know that you have a plan and you have only what's best for us in mind. So help us like we talked about, just to sit back and be calm and wait for your time to come. Because we know that when it's your time, so many great things are going to happen. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us so that we can have the patience we need to wait for your time. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Here you go. You're welcome. Okay. Good to see you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalms 40, verses 1 through 11, and it can be found on page 486 in your pew Bibles. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us, none can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offerings and sin offerings have not been required. Then I said, here I am, 
In the scroll of the book, it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, let's have a moment of prayer before our message. <laughs> Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that as we hear your Holy Word and discern it, that we might know what it is you want us to do with it. Help us to discern our next steps, our next actions, and what these words mean to us in our lives. We pray that these words will not be mine, but that they'll be yours. And we pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One day in seminary, uh, right in the middle of the lecture, right in the middle of the class, the professor turned to me and said, what time is it? And I said, oh, okay, it's 11.39. And she said, uh, that's not what I meant. And she went to somebody else and said, what time is it? And they were like, well, maybe she's on a different time zone where she's from 1039. And she said, nope, that's not what I mean either. She asked the third student, what time is it? And we were all completely confused by then. And he said, January? <laughs> and she said, no, no. Maybe the better question is, whose time is it? Who's in control of what's going on and when it goes on? Is it your time or is it God's time? Or has someone else decided for you what time it is? Well, it shouldn't be about our time or someone else's time. The only perfect time is God's time. When we are patient and trust in God's timing, the scripture says that blessings are multiplied and God's love is experienced in full. So when my professor asked what time is this, she wasn't looking for an answer that a clock can give. She was asking if we are acknowledging that God is in control and not us. We can't force God's will to happen sooner. So what happens then when we think that we can control time? If we are impatient, we may not fully experience what God has planned. If we want things to happen sooner and we try to make them happen sooner, we may even have a little bit of success. But imagine the success we could have had if it was God's time to be revealed. I believe God has a plan. And I believe that God's plan is perfect, that God's plans are always bigger and better than ours. And so imagine what we could have gotten ourselves out of if we rushed things, if we went too quick. If we're not willing to wait for God's plan, we may miss out on even better things than what we got. And that's in the best case scenario. It's also possible that if we try to rush God's timing and do things when we want it done, we could be completely unsuccessful and everything could fall apart because it's not God's perfect time. We see the results of the early church being patient and waiting for God's time on the day of Pentecost. Jesus, you know, about a month and a half before, uh, Resurrects, of course, he leaves too. He sees them after his death and he tells them, wait here in Jerusalem for a little while. It's not time for you to go yet. So wait here in Jerusalem. He didn't tell them when God's fullness will be revealed. He told them the Holy Spirit will come. Wait for it. 
He didn't say, oh, in 50 days. He, he didn't say, uh, this month, this day, at this time. He just said, wait for it. Wait patiently for it, for God's time. And I imagine that would have been difficult for them because it wasn't safe for them in Jerusalem. For all those days, they had to eat. They had to drink. They had to find ways to survive when they couldn't even leave the room they were in. And Jesus told them, stay here and wait. For an unknown amount of time, just wait. Be patient. When the time comes, then you can leave. You can go out into the world and start the church. They did. They waited patiently for God's time. And everything played out as it was supposed to. The scripture tells us that on the day of Pentecost, thousands of people came to Christ. Thousands of people became members of the church. Thousands of baptisms. Peter became their new leader. He had this ability to preach and inspire people and make new disciples. They waited for God's time. They didn't force it. And their ministry was fruitful because of that. Now imagine what if they were impatient? What if they had decided they were done waiting for the Holy Spirit and I'm leaving now because I want to get back home. I want to see my family. I'm kind of, I'm scared here. I'm kind of over it. I just want to go where I'm safe because this is the only place I'm not safe right now. What if I decide on my own, I'm going home. Imagine what, what could have happened if they weren't patient, if they didn't listen to God, if they chose their time over God's time. What could have happened? A thousand circumstances can go through our heads of what might have happened if the disciples didn't listen to God and patiently wait. Maybe, maybe they would have been killed. Maybe God selected the perfect time that they could walk out those doors and not be killed. Maybe, maybe not as many new disciples would have been made. Maybe that day, the day of Pentecost, is when all those people were exactly where they were supposed to be, when they were supposed to be there. And all those people could now become Christians, members of the body of Christ. What if maybe if they had acted too early, all those people wouldn't have been right there at that right time? Maybe they would have been a little bit successful, but not as successful as they would have been if they had waited for God's time. Maybe Peter wouldn't have been 100% ready to lead the early church. And we know what happens when ineffective leaders lead things, right? They don't grow as quickly. Maybe they were all still in a state of grief. And when we're in a state of grief, we don't make rational decisions. When we're in a state of grief, we do things we shouldn't, we say things we wouldn't, and not everything goes the way it was supposed to. Maybe they weren't emotionally ready to start the church yet until the day of Pentecost. What if they had been too early and all these things happened before they were supposed to? What would the church look like today if they hadn't waited for the Holy Spirit? I've seen this work itself out in my own life and in my own family's life as well. Because I once had a plan. Uh, after Sherry and I got married in November of 2016, we couldn't wait to start a family. You might have guessed. Uh, I kind of enjoy having kids around. Um, and I you know, had a lot of nieces and nephews. The problem with nieces and nephews is they go home. Right? I was a teacher. They all went home. I couldn't wait to have a kid of my own. I had it all planned out. We got married in November 2016. We would, we would be married for a year. And then we would go to Disney one more time, just us, before everything changes, right? We'd go to Disney in February 2018 because the crowds are less then, it's my timing. And then we'd come home, boom, start a family, 
I'd get ordained in May 2018. We'd have our baby by Christmas. I'd go on paternity leave right after Christmas, come back at Easter time. It was perfect. None of that happened. <laughs> None of it. Oh, we had our Christmas baby the next year because it wasn't God's time. What do they say? We plan and God laughs. Well, I'm sure God had a good time with me. It took us a lot longer to start a family than we expected. 15 months longer, in fact. And it was not easy, and it was not quick. Oh, and by the way, the whole thing with Georgie wasn't the only thing that didn't work out because procedures and surgeries and a lot, a lot of money was necessary for that. I decided to not get ordained in May of 2018, so that was off the rails too. But you know what? 2018 was not God's time for those things to happen. I look at it this way. If things went according to my plan, what would have happened? Imagine a different scenario. If things had happened according to my plan, we wouldn't have Georgie. We'd have some other kid, right? If things had happened according to my plan, and I got ordained in 2018, maybe the bishop would have decided to move me sooner, and I would have gone to a different church, and I wouldn't be here. See, now all of us are affected by this because you would have a different pastor in front of you right now, which I'll let you decide if that would have been a good thing or not. But <laughs> see how everything changes when you decide to not follow God's plan. Because from my perspective, I wouldn't want any other kid. And I wouldn't want to be serving any other church right now but this one. And so, see, when things happen in God's time, look what we talked about at prayer time. The church is alive and growing. And it's because of you. I wouldn't want to be in another church right now. I want to be here. And I'm happy to be here. And I feel like God sent us here. I can't imagine another kid making lifetime memories in another parsonage. No, we are where we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be here. And so if my plan had worked out, all of this, for all of us, would be totally different. See how everything changes when we make our own plans? And see how everything works out better when we wait for God's plan. All of this is only true because God's timing is perfect. That doesn't mean that waiting is easy. I assure you it wasn't. It was not easy for us to wait those 15 months. But like today's psalm says, the psalm says, we were patient and God heard our cries. Oh yes, there was crying. There was a lot of crying in those 15 months. And God heard us. And yes, we were patient, not because we wanted to be, but because we had no choice, right? Some things you just can't control. When we are patient and trust in God's will and in God's time, as hard as that is, the scripture says blessings will be multiplied, even beyond our own ability to count them, if we are just willing to wait patiently for God's time. You'll have so many blessings you can't even count them. Patience. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit that Paul listed in Galatians 5. In the book of James, the scripture says, Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete. When we give in to God's time and God's plan, perfection happens. Yes, when we are patient and wait for God's will to be done, when God wants it to be done, we see things the way they were meant to be, the way that God had planned for them to be. If we rush, even if we see a little bit of good news, that good news will still be imperfect and incomplete. Now, rushing is only one of the problems. We rush things sometimes, but also sometimes we wait too long, don't we? We wait too long and we say no to God for way too long, and then, is it possible that we have missed the boat? Imagine all the blessings, the blessings beyond counting. Imagine all those things that we miss when we keep saying, no God, no God, no God, no God. 
Oh, yes, we do that too, don't we? We do that too. We wait too long. And when we do, God's perfect time may have passed. And even if things still work out, the most perfect outcome may not be realized. And we may have a lot of missed opportunities along the way. I hear this a lot of times from my colleagues. Colleagues that felt the call to ministry from the time they were in their teens said no to God, no, no, no. They had a career, a second career, and then finally, as a third career, ministry. And then they're kicking themselves because of all those years they could have been doing God's work in ministry when they said no to God. Well, Psalm 40 teaches us that God wants our patient trust. That's really what it comes down to. In order to have patience and to wait for God's time, we have to trust that God's plan is better than ours. And that when things happen in God's time, more blessings will come than if things happened in our time. That means we have to trust in God. God wants us to trust that God knows what God is doing and God knows what is best for us, that God knows the whole plan. We can only see what's right in front of us right now. But God knows everything. God's plan and God's timing are always perfect. So then the key question is, how do we know when it is God's time? First, I believe that requires a deep relationship with God. Like all relationships, a healthy relationship with God is built on communication. How do you have a relationship with somebody if you never talk to them? And so we have to talk to God. There may be people in your life who you are intentional about speaking to every single day, even if it's just a hi, how you doing? Okay, good, talk to you tomorrow. There are people in your life that you would not go a day without speaking to because their relationship is important to you. Because if you didn't talk to them one day, you would feel like something's off or you would think maybe they're mad at me, right? So what if we place that much emphasis on our relationship with God? Imagine God up in heaven saying, why haven't they talked to me today? See, we make time for the things that are important in life. We make time to talk to those people. Can we make time to talk with God? What happens when we communicate in a healthy relationship? Well, when we talk to somebody, we get to know them better, don't we? We find out about their interests, we find out about their desires, we learn their personality. What if we did that with God? If we talked to God more, might we learn more about God? Might we learn more about God's intentions and God's desires? Might we build a stronger relationship with God if we talked to God more? When we intentionally and consistently spend time in prayer, we become more in tune with what God wants. Just like any other relationship. There are people in your life that you know what they would say. Like Kay and I, right? Kay and I, from day one when I started here, we said we're going to establish a transparent, open, good communication-based relationship so that if I'm ever not here, Kay, you know what I would say. You know what I would do. And even if you have to run it by me, you can, you can say what I would probably say. And that can only happen when open communication happens. God is ready. God has opened up communication with us. But we have to open it. We have to read it. God hasn't hidden anything from us. It's all right here. It's right here. We just have to open up and read it. We have to do our part. God hasn't hidden anything from us. This isn't a quiz. This isn't a test. God has poured God's heart out in this book. But for a good open communication relationship with God, we have to open this. And I believe that that is the first step in establishing what God's timing and what God's plan might be for our lives. Here's a few illustrations just to make this more uh, up to 2023, right? Just walking into a gym doesn't make you fit. Right? Just walking into a school doesn't give you more knowledge. Just sitting down in a car doesn't get you anywhere. 
All those things take time, desire, and action to fully realize them. Well, the same thing is true with our faith and our relationship with God. It takes time, effort, and action. It's not just about walking through these doors and sitting in these pews and saying, I've been to church. That's a great start. Great start. But then what if you go home and you open up the scriptures yourself and you start thinking about what all this means for just you? What is God doing in your life? What's God calling you to do right now? We only begin to understand God's timing when we take that time, effort, and action to build a relationship with God built on communication. That means praying, meditating, reading scripture, and talking with God often. When we trust ourselves more than God, that's when we lose patience. That's when we rush things or we take too long, and that's when we make mistakes. But we can trust God's timing. We can trust God's plan. And we can trust God's will. We're promised in scriptures that God has a plan for us. A plan for good and not for evil. A plan for a future with hope. But we must be patient. If we rush, if it's not the right time, then we may not be as fruitful, and God's plan may only be partially realized. So what time is it? Is it your time? Is it God's time? Or has someone else tried to tell you what time it is? Only a deeper relationship with God can answer that. So let's be patient. Let's trust God and God's plan. Let's read God's word. And let's open up good, healthy communication with God to build a deeper relationship with God. And when we do, Scripture promises that God will multiply our blessings even beyond that which we can count. Amen. So friends, then we have a response to give. God has determined that it is time for the church to respond to the needs of others. When we give to the church, we give to the missional work of the body of Christ. So that when God determines that it's time for the hungry to be fed and the naked to be clothed, we can make sure the church is able to do that because we have supported the church and all of its ministries. So as our ushers come forward to receive today's offering, I invite you to discern for yourself, what is God going to do with the gifts that you give today? What time is it? And where will these gifts go to bring good news to those who need it? Amen.
Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts, on all of us who give them, and on all who will receive them. Pour out your Holy Spirit to send these gifts all over the world and right here to our own communities to feed the hungry, give shelter to the homeless, medicine to the sick, and hope to the hopeless. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we conclude our service by singing together number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Friends, what time is it? God's, God's time. It's God's time, right? And what is God asking you to do right now? That we can't all answer the same. Go. Go into your homes and into your schools, into your places of work. Go and do the discernment work that it takes to find out what time it is for you on God's watch. Go. And as you go, may the light of Christ go before you into your homes and schools and places of work. Go. And as you go, may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and guide you today and every day. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.